Hi, this is Philip Pador, founder of Entlex RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about asthma. Asthma can be divided as either atopic or non-atopic. Atopic asthma is extrinsic asthma, meaning it's triggered by the environment. And this type of asthma is the most common. Atopic asthma involves inflammations mediated by systemic IgE production. The non-atopic asthma, on the other hand, is intrinsic, intrinsic asthma, and this is far less common. Non-atomic asthma, therefore, refers to an inflammation and constrictions of the airways that is not caused by exposure to an allergen. The inflammation is mediated by the local IgE production. So let us look at the cross-sections of the normal lung. The bronchioles of a normal lung, so here we have the mucus layer, and we have the pseudo-satisfied endothelial cells, we have the lamina propria, and we have the smooth mass cells surrounding all this. So that was normal. And if we were to look at an asthmatic bronchial, the lumen here, the inside is much narrower. But before we focus on the asthmatic bronchial and stuff like that, let us look at the normal history and the normal histological layers of the bronchials. So here we have the mucus. On this layer, we have the pseudostratified columnar epithelial cells. Below this, we have the basement membrane. Within the epithelial layers, we also can find goblet cells which are responsible for secreting mucus into the lumen. Below the columnar cells, we have the lamina propria, which contain many cells including macrophages and mast cells. Mast cells are responsible for secreting histamine. Below the lamina propria or the surrounding lamina propria, we have the mast cells. Now, if we were to compare the normal bronchial layer here to an asthmatic bronchial layer, we can see many differences. Firstly, we can see that there is an increase in mucus production. So there is an increase as well in the goblet cells. Also with this, there is an increase in eosinophils in the mucus and the tissue. Here we have the pseudo-satified columnar epithelial cells and below it, the basement membrane thickens. Lamina propria. Within the lamina propria, we see an increase in mast cells number. And so, we get an increase in the histamine release. We also have an increase in other cell types, including neutrophils during inflammations. We also can find that there is a smooth muscle cell hypertrophy. So smooth muscle cells increase in size. And this is due to the constriction. Now, because all of these changes are the three characteristics of asthma triad, these are the airflow obstructions, the bronchial hyperresponsiveness caused by histamine release, and the inflammations due to the increase in neutrophils and other immune cells to the area. Symptoms of asthma include shortness of breath, therefore wheezing, chest tightness, and dry irritated cough. So now that we have identified some changes that occurs during an asthmatic bronchial, let us look at the pathophysiology. So let's look at some players in the first in the pathophysiology of asthma. So we have a main one, the IgE antibodies. Now IgE antibodies are important because they can bind to receptors on mast cells. Forming a mast cells in IgE complex, the mast cells IgE complex will recognize allergens and essentially begin releasing hips of histamine. Other important players in pathophysiology of asthma include isinophils, and dendritic cells as well as the T helper cells. Now, there are two types of T helper cells. Main overall types is that there's a T helper 1 and there's a T helper 2. The T helper 1 is normally found in the lungs. So in the normal lungs, the T helper 1 are normally found. However, there is an imbalance in asthma because in asthma, the T helper 2 cells which are not normally found in the lungs are up and regulated in asthma. So we have more T helper 2 cells in the lungs of asthmatic. T helper 1 you see normally promotes inflammation by increasing cell mediated immunity. However, the T helper 2 cells promote inflammations by increasing the humoral immunity. So promoting antibody production. So I hope you can see how this correlates. Anyway, let's put all these cells together and try to create a diagram looking at the pathogenesis of asthma. And we're specifically focusing on the atopic asthma. 
So here we have the columnar pseudostratified columnar epithelial cells with goblet cells which secrete mucus on top. And here we have the lumen. Below the pseudostratified columnar cells, we have the lamina propria, where we have the mast cells and the dendritic cells of the macrophages. Okay, so let's just say an asthmatic inhales an allergen. And this allergen will trigger a reaction. So a few things can happen. One thing is that the allergen will be engulfed by the dendritic cells. And activate the dendritic cells, also the columnar epithelial cells will recognize this and secretes a substance called the thymic stromal lymphocytes. Thymic stromal lymphocytes will condition activated to dendritic cells to produce chemocards. To attack specifically the T helper 2 cells, the activated dendritic cells itself will activate the T helper cells to differentiate into the T helper 2 and also will secrete chemocards to attract the T helper 2 to the area, to the bronchioles or to the lungs. So, the activated T helper 2 cells does several things. Firstly, the T helper 2 role is to promote the, the humoral immunity. So, it will stimulate the plasma cells through the interleukin 13 and the interleukin 4. And this will promote the IgE productions by the plasma cells. IgE will obviously help, will bind one lost cells to create the IgE mast cells complex. T helper 2 to itself through the interleukin-9 will stimulate or promote mast cells activity. Another important function of the T helper 2 cells is that it will stimulate the eosinophil productions from the bone marrows through the interleukin-5. So the interleukin-5 will stimulate the eosinophils productions so you get more eosinophils. And with more eosinophils, there is a chemotactic basically. Thing occurring which will attract the eosinophils to the area to the lungs. And so, we have increased in eosinophils amounts in the lungs. So the inhaled allergen will bind into the IgE mast cells complex. And this will cause the mast cells to release a few things. Mainly histamine, prostaglandins, and leukotrins. All this specifically histamine will stimulate smooth muscle cells in the airways to cause constriction. Also, during this whole process, an endothelial cell will release the stem cell factors that will essentially maintain the mast cells to the area. And so you can imagine that if there is this IgE being produced, whenever the same type of allergen is inhaled, it will trigger this whole process of histamine release. And bronchoconstrictions, and you get more eosinophils, so you get this whole process still occurring.